Greetings everyone, I'm Don the Crown, and today I want to talk to you about an update to my league starter, the Hack of All Trades Berserker. And I have to say this is one of the most fun and smooth uh, league starts that I've ever had, and the build is absolutely destroying in-game content right now. We're at about 6 to 7 million Uber Elder DPS when we pop all our buffs, and our gear really isn't all that good. Almost our entire budget is in our sword, and you don't even need it. Here's some video footage of me killing Shaper with a Tabula Rasa and a Terminus Est, which is a 1C sword right now. And as you can tell, this build is definitely very budget friendly. This guide is also going to be the first in a series where we'll be talking about different ascendancy classes, different weapons, and different skills that you can use to destroy the endgame, with the ultimate goal of killing Uber Elder with every single ascendancy and every single uh, melee skill, every single melee ascendancy. But uh, in this particular guide, we're going to go over the skills that are used, the ascendancy choices, the passive skill tree, gearing, leveling tips, and some other stuff. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about Ascendancy choice, a weapon choice, and skill choice. Uh, so the reason why I went Berserker is because I wanted something a little bit different than uh, what I've normally done in the past, which has been champion for about the last year. And the, I landed on two-handed swords because A, I've always loved swords. They're really, really strong for both attack speed and critical strike chance. And I just think that they're better than axes currently. And the reason I landed two-handers is because while leveling, I found a really good two-handed unique sword called Edge of Madness. And that really carried me all the way to maps. And as I was on my way there, I was thinking to myself, it's going to be a lot cheaper to make one really nice sword than it's going to be to make two really nice swords. Especially when you consider things like multi-mod and adding on like hits can't be evaded. It's just pretty much half as cheap to make a good two-hander sword as it is to make a what two one-hander swords. So I figured I'd save a little bit in my budget there and uh, it's just been a really good choice. We leveled up using a bunch of different skills. We stuck with Cyclone once we got into maps just because it feels so smooth and nice to play and uh, it's overall just very enjoyable. Certainly we'll be trying out a whole bunch of other skills but that's kind of like how we've ended up where we're at right now. Let's talk about the skills we'll be using in this build. Uh, and specifically, let's start off with the auras. Now, gone are the days where you'll be converting or adding as extra your physical damage into elemental. We're gonna be focusing on pure physical damage. With some new uh, auras and some new passive skill tree points, you're able to go pure physical damage, and especially with Impale adding over 100% more physical damage, physical damage builds are going to be very, very popular and powerful. Now, if you don't know how Impale works and you haven't seen my Impale mechanic video yet, I recommend you take about six minutes to go brush up on that real quick. But uh, Impale is extremely strong. In order to really amplify this pure physical damage playstyle, we're going to use some of the new auras. Pride Aura will make enemies take more physical damage the longer they spend around us. Flesh and Stone will make them take more physical or increase physical damage as well, and also provide a nice a defensive layer if you switch to Sand Stance. We'll also have Dread Banner, which gives us some Impale chance and about 9.5% more damage in terms of Impale effectiveness. We're also going to have Precision Aura, which gives us Critical Strike chance and flat accuracy and this is really nice if you don't have a hits can't be evaded weapon but if you do have one of those you can drop this and use blood and sand for even more damage let's just talk about some of the utility skills blood rage will give you additional attack speed frenzy charge generation and leech especially since we're doing pure physical damage blood rage is going to give us a lot of life leech uh, leap slam with faster attacks and endurance charge on melee stun is going to provide us a lot of endurance charges especially since leap slam has been changed to always stun when it hits something that is on full life so when you leap slam into a pack you'll stun everything you gain endurance charges it's a very nice way to generate charges the only problem with leap slam right now is it is almost a little bit too fast when you're completely like amped up with blitz charges and rage it is extremely fast uh now i also use a vault double strike setup and this is you know 
pretty much for bursting down bosses or for very hefty single targets. Uh, but generally this doesn't see too much use and you could definitely cycle this out with something else. For cast when damage taken setup, I use Assassin's Mark and I also put Cold Snap in there to slow down enemies a little bit with a chill effect. I keep my cast when damage taken level very low so that basically any damage taken will proc off this Assassin's Mark, but you don't necessarily need to use the Cold Snap if you don't want to, or you can put a different curse in there as well. For guard skills, I use Steel Skin, mostly because it's a nice little 2000 uh, HP buffer that you can use and it has a pretty short cooldown. You don't want to spam this on cooldown. You pretty much want to be hitting this, like maybe as you're leaping into a pack or going around a corner where you could potentially get hit by a lot of ranged enemies or you see a big wing coming in, like that's when you want to hit this. You don't want to just be like hitting it on cooldown. The last support skill I want to talk to you about is called Berserk. Now what Berserk does is it consumes your rage, but it gives you significant damage uptick and damage reduction. And this skill is awesome. It's by far my favorite of the new skills that have been added to this particular patch. And it is just amazing. It feels really great when you hit it, you go fast, you do a ton of damage, you don't take very much damage, and it just is really awesome and it's another reason why I like using rage support in my main links is so I could have this more often. Speaking of main links, for my main cyclone links I'm using impale, brutality, melee physical damage, rage, and close combat support. Now if you want a bigger cyclone you can switch in pulverize for either rage or close combat and if you have enough intelligence infused channeling is incredibly nice as well. Uh, I also have a level 20 fortify sword, and so my sixth link is being supported by a seventh link, uh, level 20 fortify. So if you don't have a weapon like this, you are going to want to put either fortify into your main links or maybe onto your leap slam. So you can have fortify, especially because on my passive tree, we'll be taking the some of the new fortify nodes that are there. Now going through the individual supports for this, uh, impale support is pretty mandatory for any impale build. This provides 40% chance to impale and about 30% more physical damage worth of impale effectiveness plus an additional 15% more damage as well. This is really good. You definitely do not want to skip impale support if you're focusing on an impale style build. Uh, next up, Brutality will give us a gigantic amount of physical damage with a downside that you can't do any non-physical damage. So no Chaos and no Elemental. And this definitely means that any auras or anything that provide uh, either of these or any damage on your weapon that provide Chaos or Elemental damage aren't going to help you. And Zeri's Flask, not going to help you. And so if you are using Headhunter or you really want to use one of these items, I'd recommend switching out Brutality support, but it's a very big damage boost to use this. Uh, melee physical damage is just a very solid physical damage booster. Not much to say about that. Uh, next up, Rage support is really great, not only for the flat damage, but for that Rage generation. Uh, with Rage support and our Ascendancy, we'll be able to get to maximum Rage stacks in 10 seconds as opposed to 15. Uh, and this is also really nice for keeping Berserk up for as long as possible or for getting your rage up for more Berserk. I really like popping Berserk during uh, trying to unlock the Legion and this pretty much will allow me to Berserk for a long period of time and then by the time my Zerk comes back off cooldown I'll have a decent amount of rage so I can just Berserk right again and it feels really really good. Next up, Close Combat. It's kind of received mixed reviews from people due to the somewhat negative interaction between Lion's Roar's knockback and the need to be close to get the full damage. But according to Mark GGG, uh, you only need to be 15 units away from things to get the full damage. So anything that's 15 units or closer, full damage, and then it scales off linearly going up to 40 units. And so that most of our damage for things that are like big and beefy is going to be within that max damage range or close to it. And generally the things that you can't knock back are the things that also you really need to care about the most doing damage, like you can't knock back Shaper. So you don't necessarily need to worry about that negative Lion's Roar interaction. 
And uh, lastly, in pulverized support is really, really nice for the extra area. The reduced attack speed doesn't really affect you very much, and the additional damage is pretty nice. And this is what I swap in for brutality when I'm doing Headhunter. Next up, let's talk about the Berserker Ascendancy choices. Currently, this is my setup, and this is the order that I recommend taking these points. Create the Slaughter provides us with Rage Generation on hit and a decent chance to deal double damage. Rage is a really cool mechanic that has been reworked with this patch and made available to all classes with the Rage Support Gem. You can have a maximum of 50 Rage and you lose Rage if you haven't been hit or gained Rage recently. You also gain benefits to your attack damage and speed and your movement speed depending on how much Rage you have. At maximum rage, you'll have 50% increased attack damage, 25% increased attack speed, and 10% movement speed. This is really nice when you're leveling, especially with the rage support, as you get these bonuses ramped up pretty early in the zone, and you can pretty much keep them rolling through the entire zone. Next up is Flawless Savagery. This node provides increased critical strike chance, flat physical damage when you do crit, and crit multi. This node is pretty darn strong, especially if you already have some crit in your tree or on your gear while you're leveling, and continues to be strong through the end game. The third ascendancy point is somewhat of a toss up between Blitz and Aspect of Carnage. I personally use Blitz, but I'll explain the pros and cons of each. Blitz gives you 2% more attack speed and 10% reduced critical strike chance per Blitz charge. Now you have 20 maximum Blitz charges and you gain one on ev like every single crit and there's no sort of cooldown on that. This is really great because at max charges you're attacking 40% faster. That's like more, that's 40% just faster. But the downside is that you have minus 200% critical strike chance and that really dampens your ability to crit if you haven't invested in crit already. Overall, this is my pick because attack speed has good interactions with Impale and moving super fast with Blitz is really nice. Like once you have those Blitz stacks and you're leap slamming, you go so fast. The downside of course being that you do need good critical strike chance. The other option I would say is Aspect of, the Car Aspect of Carnage. And Aspect of Carnage is relatively straightforward. 10% more damage taken for 40% more damage. I actually use this as my League Start Ascendancy point. However, once I was getting into like yellow and red maps, I was taking so much damage. I was shifting my tree to be more defensive, to focus more on life nodes, and Aspect of the Carnage just had to go because I was taking too much damage, and it's definitely the damage drop off is a little bit noticeable, but taking less damage is a lot more important to me right now. Lastly, Rite of Ruin makes it so that you lose life based off how much rage you have, up to 5% per second. But this is only while you haven't lost rage recently, so if you use the Berserk skill, you'll stop taking damage from this. You can also not be stunned while you have 25 rage, and all of the effects of rage are tripled. Now the not be stunned is like not really all that big of a deal if you're playing Cyclone because you cannot be stunned while you're Cycloning. However, the triple uh, rage effect is really amazing. This doesn't count the flat physical damage that you get from the rage support gem, but this will make your rage go and do 150% increased physical damage with attacks, 75% attack speed, and 30% movement speed. Uh, the reason I recommend getting this last is because the rage degen can be somewhat significant, especially when you're using blood rage as well, and you want to have some of the regeneration on the tree before you go into this. Next, let's talk about the passive skill tree. This is my passive tree at level 95. Don't worry, I've included lower level skill trees in the path of building, including a leveling skill tree, which I'll go over later. My, tr my tree picks up a lot of damage, life, and importantly, acrobatics and phase acrobatics. This tree is relatively balanced around defenses and damage, but you could definitely push it one way or the other. 
I never even really got great jewels for this build, so I haven't taken any of the two point jewel nodes. If you're looking at jewels, crit multi and attack speed are your best friends. Just make sure that they're better than some of the points on the passive tree. I'm going to talk about my leveling uh, passive tree towards the end of the guide because it is slightly different than what the end game tree would look like. For bandits, I recommend helping Alira for the crit multi and to help smooth out your resistances. However, going for two passive points is really a good option as well since there's a lot on the tree that we want, and especially since like I'm skipping jewel nodes right now, two points could probably go a long way, but especially for like the beginning of the game, early leveling up and low budget, the additional resistances really does help out a lot. For Pantheon points, I switch around a lot between the Minder Gods depending on the content I'm doing, and I'm pretty much sticking to Solaris for Major Gods. Lunaris is definitely very nice for leveling and mapping, but I do like Solaris for the single target uh, boost. Next, let's talk about gear. Uh, the gear requirements on this build are incredibly low and can certainly be started on a budget. The highest priority piece is your weapon, a two-handed sword. Now, I made a video guide about how to craft a great exquisite blade, uh, and the total costs are about like four to seven exalts once you've isolated one to two good mods. Now, the base of an Elder Exquisite Blade that's item level 80 or higher has been uh, somewhat expensive this league, however, the prices are continuing to go down, and I definitely expect it to just continue to go down and down. Uh, now, luckily, you don't necessarily even need that. You can definitely kill Uber Elder using a Terminus Est and a Tabula Rasa, as I've done recently. I put up a video of that. And besides that, like having a six link is the most expensive part. And so you could definitely do this on a very small budget. Uh, the next really important piece is rings and maybe an amulet. I'd recommend having at least one to two pieces that you can have minus mana cost, which is a prefix. And you can either find this automatically on them from legion drops or you can craft it onto yourself uh, and i made a video like solving cyclones mana issues you definitely should check that out as well uh, this is really important to have because at end game right now my cyclone's doing over like 250 mana per second while i'm berserking so it's pretty much not sustainable to even leech back that amount of mana uh, so having zero mana cost is really really nice if you're looking to get damage uh, on the rings, flat physical damage is very nice and crit multi as well on like the amulet, but you're not really going to benefit from any of the elemental stats like we have in the past or like fizz as extra. And so the damage uh, like amplitude from your rings and amulets is a little bit less than in leagues past. For gloves, Hemophilia can make enemies explode if you made them bleed. However, my damage is so high right now that 25% chance to bleed just isn't enough. If you end up getting more chance to bleed on the tree or other places, these can be a good option to help you deal with porcupines. However, hitting steel skin and maybe even berserk has been working out just fine for me. A nice pair of rare gloves that have life, resistances, and attack speed has been working out just fine for me. Now the rest of the gear is basically generic rares with high life and resistances. There are some opportunities to get more damage, like you can get a minus uh, 9 physical damage reduction on helmet from delve fossils, and I would highly recommend that you get high movement speed boots from uh, probably the legion. There's like a dodge attacks or dodge spells that you can get on there as well. And those are both really solid options. But really, this gear is not min-max, but you don't necessarily need it to be super expensive min-max gear to really pump out the content. For leveling, I recommend some slight changes to the passive tree. I found that focusing on attack speed was great for starting off, and my tree ended up looking like this. You can find my different leveling trees here in the linked POB in the description. For leveling skills, I recommend starting off with Perforate into Blade Storm. Once you hit level 22, go and buy yourself an Edge of Madness sword. This thing is stupid good. Honestly, one of the luckiest things I've ever found while leveling on a league start. I used it from Act 3 all the way into yellow maps. Uh, and using Blade Storm, Rage, Close Combat, and Onslaught 4 Link combo will let you leap slam your way to maps so stinking fast. Once you get to maps, you can go switch to Cyclone, and you can even switch earlier than that if you want. 
Blade Storm is just really fast and we don't care about clearing full areas because you can just leave the storm behind you, it'll tick on things, give you rage, give you the close combat buff, and give you onslaught. It's just so stinking fast. Well, that's it for the guide. I thank you guys for watching. Uh, I definitely will be checking out different ascendancies and different weapons and different skills as the league progresses. And so if there's a specific combo that you want to see, make sure you put it down in the comments below. And if you have any questions or comments or things that I missed, I'm sure I missed something, uh, please put it down in the comments as well. And you can always come by my channel at twitch.tv slash Don the Crown. And have a good one.